Mordecai honored. That night the king could not sleep, so he ordered the book of the Chronicles, the record of his reign, to be brought in and read to him. It was found, recorded there, that Mordecai had exposed Bigthana and Teresh, two of the king's officers who guarded the doorway, who had conspired to assassinate King Xerxes. What honor and recognition has Mordecai received for this? The king asked. Nothing has been done for him, his attendants answered. The king said, who is in the court? Now Haman had just entered the outer court of the palace to speak to the king about hanging Mordecai on the gallows he had erected for him. A quick pause, or a pause. So just to fill us in, <clears throat> we are now in the book of Esther. This is during the exile. So, of course, the Israel was brought out of Egypt because um, they had originally went down there to um, get away from uh, the possibilities of having to deal with famine. And uh, remember, it was Joseph, you know, uh, and and how he was sent down there first um, through, you know, trials and tribulations. But there's a reason for everything. And so he, um, so Israel was down there and then they left. They were able to leave through the glory of God, through the Lord showing his power and might, and Moses led them out. They were led to the promised land. Uh, they were told, you know, as long as you follow the rules, the laws, and uh, covenant of the Lord, everything's going to go well in the promised land. But if you forget, and if you don't, <clears throat> then you may be eventually disciplined, and that includes up to exile. Unfortunately, Israel as a whole, after generation after generation, even that generation that Moses was in, they didn't get to see the promise. They didn't get to go into the promised land. <clears throat> and they, they they didn't get to experience it because of their hard-headedness. So, so their children, though, were able to go into the promised land. And they were able to be in the promised land. And it was a land flowing with milk and, milk and honey. And everything was fantastic. And that's... What happens? Sometimes humanistic things happen, and those things are everything's going good. We tend to forget who provided that, who and 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 reasons for humbling ourselves and giving thanks. Which is interesting because I'm doing this around that time of the year, right? <laughs> Thanksgiving. I know this is probably this is more than likely going to be posted afterwards. It's going to be posted between um, Thanksgiving and Christmas. Um, but, you know, tis the season, so it's very interesting that going over this right now. And so they, they uh, Israel wasn't thankful. Um, and so eventually, slowly but surely, they started doing just as the previous, the Canaanites that were there were doing. They did exactly and more so. They were worshiping idols. They were worshiping other gods. They were doing all kinds of detestable acts. And so the Lord warned them over and over again through seers and prophets and and through <clears throat> through people through acts and they didn't listen over and over again generation after generation so eventually lord said okay now's the time and they were exiled and so this during the exile um this is in uh, persia king xerxes and even though they were exiled, the Lord had given them hope because the Lord never said, okay, you know, you stop, you stop doing these things. I'm done with you because that's not how the Lord is. The Lord is just and he is right. He can discipline us when he believes that we need to be disciplined and he can bless us when he, when he believes that we are to be blessed and he loves us so much that he will just bless us and bless us and bless us. Even when we do wrong, unfortunately, but he knows, he knows us and he knows that we will turn to him. Some won't, and we'll talk about that too, especially in the New Testament, especially when we get to Revelation. Some don't. Um, do they still, um, uh, are they still within, um, sometimes they are still being blessed though, because the Lord still gives 
time gives time his he's patient and he gives time and he gives warnings <laughs> over and over again but okay so back to here esther <laughs> so again the lord give give israel hope he saw in the hearts of the the their, their conquerors they were never completely defeated they were never completely wiped out they were just exiled so um you know they were living uh, in a little bit of uh, of of fear but they had hope in the lord and the uh, hope in the lord showed even just in this previous bible study so their exile <clears throat> and for some odd reason the king had a queen but she didn't come to him when he requested and that thus during the time this old testament um and and how it was during uh in persian the culture and how things were in society um and so the um king or the king went to his council the council declared that he or told him that he should declare that the queen never come back in front of him again and this will show throughout the land that women are to respect you know of course the men the authority figures in at this time and so that is what it has is what has happened as we can see though um even though this is following a a path a path the Lord can utilize, even though they're not, they weren't seeking the Lord, even though they worshiped their own gods and such, um, the Lord was utilizing this because we don't understand that the Lord can even utilize uh, bad decisions and even things that are sin for his righteousness and glory because of the outcome. And that's what we're going to read today. So and I don't want to jump ahead, though. <laughs> so here we go with... Uh, the king, King Xerxes, he was like, okay, um, he was upset. So his council was like, okay, we're, let's let's have you gather women, you know, beautiful women, and choose one. And here comes Hadassah, also known as Esther. Hadassah is her Hebrew name, right? Did you know that? <clears throat> and so she um, she never told anybody, you know, that she is Hebrew, that she's Jew, Jewish. And from, you know, she's Israeli. And so, um, but she gets chosen. The king immediately falls in love with her. She's beautiful. He falls, he loves her. And so he chooses her out of all the women that he got to see and pick and, and look at. And he chose Esther. And so Esther becomes queen. Well, we have people in his council in his court in the king's court that you know they're uh and they enjoy power they enjoy authority and they also enjoy using utilizing that power towards oppression and hurt and pain and suffering and this person named Haman, who was an agite um was being um uphold uphold by the king like um his authority was increasing because the king found delight in him. He he thought that Haman had done a lot for him. So he gave him a lot of honor and a lot of authority. So Haman was going about the town or going through his day, and he ran across, across uh, Mordecai. Now, Mordecai is Esther's um, cousin. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. I, I thought it was um, her uncle, but I... I believe if we read right in the previous Bible study, it was, uh, they were cousins. Let me just double check on that. <laughs> Let me just double check on that. Um, Esther, okay, so let's see here. Mordecai, okay. And King Xerxes, Mordecai's son, Jenner, had been carrying, Mordecai had a cousin, had a cousin named Hadassah, okay. In chapter two, so um, there's a lot here, you know, when it comes to the Bible. <laughs> it's, and so uh, applaud those who memorize. So okay, so um, he, but he was taking care. Mordecai was taking care of Esther. Esther was taken in as queen. But he, um, Haman had passed by Mordecai. And Mordecai didn't bow to him. You know, all here's all these people. He knowing that there's prestige and it's time to bow to him and who's walking into the room. And Mordecai, Mordecai, he is Jew. He is 
um, Israel. He uh, is um, Hebrew. He, oh, the only person he bows to is the Lord. And so, and this another thing about the, this book is that there's no actual mention of, like, there's no actual and God, right? <clears throat> However, everything is about faith. Everything is about is about God, right? <laughs> it goes to show. So then, Heman gets real petty. <laughs> he gets real petty, and he's like, "That person just didn't bow. That person did not bow to me." He wanted. Not only did he want Haman to, or Mordecai. Not only did Haman want Mordecai to die, but he found out who Mordecai was culturally who he came from, where he came from, who his people were. And he decided, I want those, all of them wiped out. So he had an opportunity with the king because the king, like I said, was wanting to give him honor. And he, and Hammond, he told Hammond, whatever, you know, whatever you ask, what, you know, what's the, um, you can ask for it and it may be done. And so Hammond said he, he did have something, and that was he told a lie to the king. He said, you know, you have a group of people in your kingdom that, you know, you defeat it, but they are uh, worshiping their own, you know, he, they are doing their own thing. They, they, they don't uh, respect you. You know, they're going to be, they're going to be rebelling. You know, he made up all these lies, right? <clears throat> And put them in the comments, right? Put them in the comments. <laughs> and so he um, made, a, and so the king gave him a signet ring and said, "Okay, do as you as you think is right." And so Hammond put out a decree throughout all of the realms um, that the um, Hebrews, the Israels, the Jews would be killed, and he selected a day. And so right now. It wasn't immediately. It was over. It was over time. There would be a day coming, and so right now, time is passing by, and we got to see how it affected the people. The people, all over the place, including in Susa, were like bewildered because, and you know, may have been scared even. May have been, you know, because they were conquered you know they were already living in exile they were already living under this king they were already doing you know um knowing that they were under his rulership and here he is select here is even though it wasn't him it was Hammond, but it was under the king's orders um for a whole people to be killed so that was disturbing and mordecai <clears throat> who uh when he, once he heard it he immediately tore his clothes and put on ash on his head, forehead and went into um, just a state of mourning, a state of um, wanting to fast and worship the Lord and pray for hope and pray for a, pray for a miracle. And the Lord was already on it. So sometimes we think that, bringing past to present, sometimes we think that um, the Lord works in the background. You know, he's, you know, we need something done. So he's going to, he's going to start working in the background. What we don't understand is the Lord goes before us. He's the Alpha and the Omega, <laughs> the beginning and the end. He already knows. He already has made plans. He's already at work. He's been at work. He already finished. <laughs> he's already, it, we're the ones having to catch up to it <clears throat> through our faith, through our hope in the Lord. And so, once we realize that, then we we have that comfort, we have that peace, and we have that love. And then we we see those things. We see his action happening. It's amazing. It's amazing. In this case, all these people didn't know what was going on. They just saw this edict saying that they were to be killed. And Esther, who is a Jew, who is Hebrew, who is from Israel, is a queen, is the queen. So Mordecai sends a letter to Esther and says, hey, Esther, I, I recognize this. I recognize this is from the Lord. You are in your position from the Lord. It is time for you to act. And you know, Esther, she's human. We're all human, right? She has those feelings too. She's like, okay, 
the king hasn't requested for my presence because during that, that time you had to be requested. And if you went before the king without being requested, you could die unless the king decided to hold out a scepter, which means he's accepting your presence. Here, you can come on in. Put any corrections that you may have to this in the comments. <laughs> we'll go over it again. You know, like this isn't the first time I'm going to be, or last time I'm going to be definitely going over this, especially the book of Esther. Um, and so, and there's a lot to co cover. Look at the time, my goodness. And so then, um, so Esther sends back, she's like, you know, hey, I can't go before the, you know, you got, you know, I can't go before the king unless he calls me. So Mordecai says, look, if you, this is the time for you. If you don't do it, the Lord will find some, will use, utilize someone else. And another thing, past the present, <clears throat> when the Lord speaks to us, um, the Lord gives us opportunity. And if we don't, we don't act upon or we don't do what he's uh, given us to do or given us the, those opportunities, the Lord will find somebody else. It's just for us, it would be a missed opportunity, a missed blessing, a missed gift, whatever it may be. Um, we, and then I also mentioned we can't get it twisted in our mind that if we don't do something, like if I or you or whoever is uh, that person doesn't do something, that God's plan is going to fail. That's n not the case. Not the case. Remember, he's the Alpha and the Omega, beginning and the end. He, he, he's in control, period. Again, if <clears throat> that if a person doesn't, if that person doesn't do it, there will be somebody that's going to do it. <clears throat> so he reminds her of that. He says, hey, Esther, if you don't do this, somebody, Lord, don't worry. And you won't escape punishment or, uh, or what's going to happen. You won't escape. Don't think you're going to escape it. But the Lord will send, uh, the Lord's full of hope. He's going to send someone. So Esther sends back a note saying, okay, this is what we're going to do. We're going to fast. We're going to fast for three days. You're going to fast. I'm going to fast. Like, you know, keep me in prayer. <laughs> I'm going to go before the Lord. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go before the Lord. I'm going to ask, you know, I'm going to be like fasting, like, please. And then I'm going to go before the king. And if he kill, if, if, if that means my in the end of my life, then so be it. But if not, so. <clears throat> so she goes before the king and the king holds out a scepter. How amazing. The Lord works in his mysterious ways and his timing. So, and that's another thing about timing we're going to get to today because why didn't Esther say what she did from the last time? Because remember, we left off in a, on a cliffhanger. Esther invited him, the, you know, the king, and Haman, whom the king had delighted in at the time, to go to a banquet. She knew who Haman was, and she knew that Haman was the one that made the decree. But she's like, okay, let's, let's, I'm going to have host a banquet. They go to the banquet. The king asks her what she wants, you know, what's her request? <clears throat> because that's what you're granted. If you get go before the king and he holds out a scepter, you also may get a request. <clears throat> she tells him, come back. Come back tomorrow or the next day day or what have you and I'm going to host another banquet and then I'll let you know so we look we look at that and we're like was Esther afraid maybe I mean she just put her life on the line and thank the Lord it didn't wasn't killed it ended that same day timing it may have not been time she may have not had that peace that comfort it may have not been there. It may have, the words may have not been there. The feeling that um, guidance from the Lord may have not been there at that time. Or it may have, and it may have been telling her, it's not time. It's not time. So bring another thing, bring, bring past to present. Sometimes we may want to do something. We may want to give. We may want to do something. Or we may want to do something. <clears throat> and we want to go to the Lord first and we want to make sure that the Lord guides us and the Lord 
um, shows us what to do and how to do it and when and when because timing is everything. You may think you're doing a huge favor, a huge gift to somebody or whatever, and you may just go and you're like, here, do, I did, the, you know, here you go, um, you know, what, you know, Merry Christmas or Happy New Year or Happy Birthday, you know, or this is a gift, you know, here you go. And it may not be looked upon that because of the timing, because of timing, when, where, how, why, because of timing. But when the Lord guides us to do something, it's perfect timing. It's just on time. It's right on time. And it makes a huge difference. It can make a huge difference and a huge impact. And so when you do do it and it's a correct, it's, it's a blessing. It's a huge thing. It's a huge, enormous thing. So think about that because we always want to have control right but we also need we also need to give that control in now in that timing to the lord because then it will be perfect um and correct and right so <clears throat> a lot right i was like wow we have a lot that we went over and a lot reveal what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind how does it make you feel and what does it make you think 